Welcome back to the report. Now, over the weekend, the city of Kumanovo in Macedonia was in lockdown as the police conducted a violent operation in what they say was the interception of a Kosovan armed group. However, many have questioned this in a country where blame and counter-blame has been the norm. Afsal Ahmed looks at this and the aftermath. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this is the aftermath of a deadly airstrike in Syria. But these are the remains of what was once a lively family home in northern Macedonia. Situated in the mainly ethnic Albanian neighbourhood in the city of Kumanovo, residents here walk through the destruction, wondering what happened. My house first has to be demolished, and then we have to see what we will do. Me and my family, we cannot live here anymore. Police conducted a pre-dawn raid on Saturday in an operation involving armoured vehicles, helicopters and plenty of chaos. It lasted a whole day. They sought who they say were gunmen from neighbouring Kosovo, planning to attack civilian and state targets. The city of nearly 80,000 people was in lockdown for nearly two days, with residents in the vicinity fleeing their homes carrying what they could. This woman here said she didn't have time to lock her house, after her next-door neighbour's home caught fire. Officials say eight police and 14 armed attackers were killed in the operation and more than 30 were arrested. The Macedonian Interior Ministry laid blame on former Albanian rebel commanders from Kosovo during its separation more than a decade ago. Their spokesperson Ivo Kotevsky said the group entered the country at the beginning of May and hid out in the Kumanovo neighbourhood where police found a huge arsenal of weapons. The armed group which was hiding in several houses and threatened the security of the people of the Republic of Macedonia have been entirely neutralised and eliminated. This official account, however, has been questioned by residents in the city who say they've seen no sign of any so-called terrorist activity and it was impossible to verify. Me, like other citizens, were surprised and no one knows why this happened. I know during the war in 2001, we were informed and we have supported these groups, which were fighting for the Albanian cause. But now it is the contrary. The people in this region were guarding their villages to not let anyone infiltrate from outside our villages. To us, it was something that happens only in dreams. It was not terrorists that did this here, because there are no terrorists. The real terrorists are the Macedonian Prime Minister the Macedonian interior minister, the Albanian leader and their thieves. They themselves set up this. Other residents in the city say they fear that these attacks may stop unnecessary ethnic tensions in a country where 30% of the population are ethnic Albanians. We are only sending a message to those who want to divide us, to leave us alone, to let people carry on with their lives. If they don't know how to run the state, then the least they have to do is let us live in peace. That's all. The events were deep in concern over stability in Macedonia, where the government faces allegations of illegal wiretapping and widespread abuse of office by the opposition. Only last week, protesters demanded the resignation of the Prime Minister in heavy clashes with police. The incident also comes less than three weeks after around 40 ethnic Albanians from neighbouring Kosovo briefly seized control of a police station on Macedonia's northern border demanding the creation of an Albanian state. Afsal Ahmed, The Report. Now joining me to discuss this story, uh, I'm rejoined by Bill Bowring and uh, Blarina Karajosi, who writes for One Europe, and also by Tanya Milevskaya, who's a uh, Brussels correspondent for the Macedonian independent news agency, Meta. Now, Bill, you've recently been in Macedonia. What do you make of these stories that have been emerging over the weekend? Well, I should say I've been going to Macedonia for quite a few years now, but very recently I was for the Council of Europe, in fact, in Okrid um, and in Skopje, and I was in Tetova and Gostiva on the way to, and the, which are Albanian Muslim cities. And actually, after the war against uh, Serbia, uh, there was a serious attempt by the Kosovo Liberation Army to stir up violence in Macedonia, where there is a substantial Albanian minority. Uh, and in fact, that um, did not come to serious violence. And one of the reasons was that the Macedonian government conceded the founding in Tetova of what's called the Southeastern European University, 
which is a university for Albanians. And that was the work of the former High Commissioner on uh, National Minorities, Max van, van der Stoel. And certainly, I mean, I was there literally uh, last time a couple of months ago. And of course, there have always been tensions. And it's not an easy situation at all. Uh, however, things were pretty peaceful. So my own inclination at the moment is to say that this is not part of a big general problem threatening to blow up Macedonia, uh, but um, at the moment, an isolated incident, and we don't really know enough about what uh, has been and is going on, I mm. would say. Uh, Tanya, uh, what's your take on the, on the background to this? Well, uh, yes, um, I, I think that what we're missing here in the in the presentation of this whole situation is is the context in which these attacks have happened. Uh, we, we we are facing in Macedonia an authoritarian regime uh, led by Prime Minister Gruevski, and in the last three months, the opposition has been revealing um, damning evidence of uh, high, high-level corruption and even attempts to conceal a murder by the prime minister and his closest uh, allies. Um, and there is, and this is not, I think, some Balkan conspiracy theory, because uh, authoritative uh, sources have said that this attack could actually be an attempt to cover up something else, or at least to attempt to silence the opposition and the protests that have been uh, going on in, in Skopje for the past few weeks. There is widespread um, dissatisfaction among Macedonians with this, uh, with this government. These, uh, these stopped conversations that the opposition is revealing now have also showed that the government has been, uh, well, been engaged in electoral fraud. So we don't even know if they've been actually democratically elected. Um, so, uh, and, and, and as, as, as Bill said, there is no, there are no real ethnic tensions as we have seen in 2001. This is not an ethnic uh, crisis, it's a political crisis. Um, and uh, we will see tonight around 10.30, uh, the leader of the opposition will, will talk in a, in a political show, show in which he will, uh, he, he, there, there was a teaser uh, for the for the political show in which he he revealed that actually the uh, the government he, he has sources saying that the government has known about this armed group uh, since 2013, which really poses dangerous questions. Okay, so okay. Bill, I mean, um, Tanya's suggesting there that there is some link with some of the recent protests, and that there is a sort of wider context to this. Do you do you think that's true? Well, I absolutely agree with what she's saying that um, this is not, um, if you like, a symptom of a deep ethnic uh, conflict within Macedonia. I mean, there are tensions, but not not like this. And I think she's absolutely right that one has to look to the political situation, and in particular the criticisms of the present government. Um, one, I mean, for example, something which struck me uh, being in Skopje quite recently was huge amounts of money in a very poor country being lavished on extraordinarily grandiose public buildings and a plague of statues all over uh, Skopje. And everyone's saying, what on earth is this about, actually, mm. um, in a country which is, uh, as I say, quite a poor country? Mm. Uh, Blarina, let me bring you into the discussion. So, so both our commentators so far have, have agreed uh, really on an analysis which says that this is part of the wider response of an authoritarian government to a protest movement. Do, do you agree with that? Well, actually, I agree with that because, uh, as I see, the current crisis has no ethnic component. I, I believe that the inter-ethnic relations in Macedonia have never been better. I, I do think that the anti-corruption bells are ringing loud after the content of the wiretaped conversation, which included evidence of corruption, bribery, abuse of power, suppression of the freedom of media, which are very important issues related to the rule of law in the country. So uh, I would like to mention that uh, in the last month, there have been several notable security-related incidents in Macedonia. And when I say security issues, 
I wish to 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 say about cases when civilian Albanian population has been involved. But no clear uh, investigation has been done or nothing has been clearly said in the media. Okay. So uh, having this in mind, I fully agree with, uh, with the colleagues. Okay. Uh, Tanya, well, 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 what do you make then? Uh, I mean, all three of you are agreed about this, or saying that, you know, the ethnic tensions are, are, are not a, the, the key question here. Um, but some figures in NATO have been um, saying that um, they're very concerned about the ethnic tensions in, in the area. What, what do you make of that intervention if your take on what's happening is so different? Well, of course, it could it, it could become an ethnic issue if we let it become so. Uh, the, the the government has been engaged in a, in a propaganda these these last few days. I mean, at, at least the government mouthpieces, uh, the, the 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 media that are close to the government that keep stirring uh, ethnic tensions, but also not only domestic media, but the Serbian some of Serbian media. I I, I do not wish to. To, to accuse all of the Serbian media, there are high professionals there, but some of the tabloids uh, have actually been spreading false rumors all along, uh, saying that there are uh, security incidents in, in Tetovo, um, or that there will be a big war starting tomorrow, the 12th of May, and so on. These are, these are unverified information. And of course, there could be uh, th there could be interest of the Serbian uh, security services there. I mean, we don't know. We have uh, the, the worst thing in this whole in this whole crisis is that actually the government has ha hasn't said yet who these people are. We don't know if it's the if it's the, the the KLA or if it's some other terrorist group or if they come from Syria or I don't. We don't know who they are or what they want. Mm -hmm. I mean, a terrorist group when they plan an attack, they usually have some demands. I think. Uh, in this case, we don't know who they are. So this is uh, the, the whole uh, confusion around this attack is, is, is even more worrying. It could lead, of course, to, to, to ethnic tensions in the end. Okay. Lorena, what's been the popular response to this? Because, you know, the, the, the accounts that we're hearing, the report and so forth, is that this is a pretty extraordinary uh, and violent police action. So what's been the, the, the reaction of ordinary citizens to this? I wish to, to say my view as I see it in a situation where the information is lacking mm. and when uh, I would say the local medias are not allowed to enter there and the only uh, mean of uh, having information is from the public uh, TVs of the Macedonian government. Mm. Uh, I wish to say as an Albanian <laughs> that uh, we as Albanians have never started a war and we do not have uh, religious problems amongst us. So these are, I would say, ridiculous claims that they are terrorists. They can be armed. I don't know for which reasons. And I wish to see a very deep investigation on it. I'm really curious to see. But uh, what I felt as an Albanian, I wish to stress this, is that the population of Kumanova was scared. I feel like they didn't know the people that were living there and they were having this, this fight. Because we have this code of honor that in case we agree with the people who are in a conflict, we protect them, we defend them, we fight with them. Okay. But this, this, I didn't, this I didn't see it, okay. actually. <laughs> so I felt like they were strangers thrown in the middle of a battle, which I don't know who started it. <laughs> okay, Bill, where do you think this is going? Well, I, I think that it's a really deep crisis in Macedonia. And of course, Macedonia is um, an important country in the Balkans. And as my colleague was just saying, you know, this is being picked up by some extreme right elements in Serbia. And this could have very unpleasant uh, consequences. Of course, Macedonia is a country which is landlocked. It's in between Serbia and Greece. It's had many problems with Greece over the years. Uh, one of the key issues, I mean, since independence, uh, has been creating a Macedonian identity. And this looks like a deliberate attempt to try to blow it up. Okay. Well, all three of you, thanks very much. But I'm sorry. <laughs>